All right, so how does this matrix business uh, relate to symmetry operations? Well, in a very straightforward way, uh, what you can do is you can use a three by three matrix to transform any arbitrary point in three dimensional space, right, X, Y, Z, um, and show how that point transforms by a given symmetry operation. So uh, consider, for example, the identity symmetry operation, right? We know that the identity symmetry uh, operation does nothing. It just takes a molecule, every molecule has identity, right? And it just is itself, it's a symmetry of itself. So mathematically, what is that doing? That's taking X, Y, Z, any X, Y, Z point, and it's converting it into X, Y, Z, right? It's, it's not doing anything to it. So the three by three matrix that does that um, is uh, ones on the diagonal and zeros on the off diagonal. And so if you go through this, right, with matrix multiplication, you'll have um, the vector row by column, right? So the first row is one, zero, zero, dotted with X, Y, Z. And so that's gonna be one times X plus zero times Y plus zero times Z, that gives you X. And then you go on row by column, zero, one, zero, dotted with X, Y, Z. That's zero times X plus one times Y plus zero times Z, that gives you Y. Zero, zero, one, dotted with X, Y, Z. Zero times X gives you zero. Zero times Y gives you zero. Plus, lastly, one times Z gives you Z. So this matrix, you might remember if you've taken linear algebra or something like this, um, with ones along the di diagonal and zeros on the off diagonal, is called the identity matrix. And this is why it does the identity uh, the symmetry operation. Okay, so let's do some of the other symmetry operations now. What about inversion? Inversion, we defined when we talked about it, right, um, was taking x, y, z and going to minus x, minus y, minus z. This was the easiest way to think about inversion. We also thought about it qualitatively as saying something that, you know, was at the top and the right and the back, that would go to the opposite, right? It would go to the bottom, to the left, and to the front, for example. Um, so this is, uh, now the identity uh, uh, matrix turns out to just be negative ones along the diagonal with zeros on the off diagonal. And again, you can go through the math, very similar as what we just did for the identity, but it's gonna convert X, Y, Z into negative X, negative Y, negative Z. So this three by three matrix mathematically um, is the inversion matrix. It, it, it represents what the inversion operator does. So let's um, keep going. Let's think about reflections now. And so with uh, reflections or mirror planes, right, we use the Greek letter sigma to represent that. And here we have to define, you know, where is this mirror plane? So the simplest mirror planes are those that are in some sort of Cartesian standard plane. For example, x, y, right? So um, if I can just draw here, um, and the x, y plane would be a plane that's right here, right? And so you can envision what's that gonna do. If you have a point up here, it's gonna flip it into the mirror down to the bottom, right? But any point in the x, y isn't gonna change, right? So your, um, if you had some vector here, that vector now just the, net, the Z component became negative, but the X and Y component didn't change. So effectively what you're doing is X, Y, Z went into X, Y, negative Z. So that's gonna be, hopefully you can see this pretty easily, um, one for the X row, kind of one for the Y row, but then a negative one for Z to make it into negative Z. A very similar thing for X, Z plane, right? Um, X, Z plane, is, is very similar. That would be something like this, and that's the XZ plane, right? And that is going to take some vector over there and flip it. If it was pointing to the right, it's gonna flip it to the left. It, the XZ plane doesn't contain the Y, so that's the one where it flips. So that's why you can see the Y went to negative Y, but X went to X and Z went to Z. So that's gonna be one, negative one, and one across the diagonal. 
lastly, um, sigma yz, right, that doesn't contain x, so that's gonna flip the x, so you have a negative one, 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 okay? X, y, z went to negative x, y, and z. Um, matrices for rotations. This gets into a little bit of trigonometry. We will be using uh, a little bit of trigonometry in the course, so you'll have to, um, you know, we'll go over it and you'll, you'll be, if you are a little rusty on your trigonometry, it's okay. Uh, none of this is difficult and there's only a few real answers you need to know, so they'll keep, they'll keep popping up and reoccurring um, throughout all the problems we do. But, this is the formula. I will always give you this formula. Uh, a lot of different formulas I will give you, and I will also tell you, um, you know, ahead of the exam what formulas I will give you. So that will be very clear, right? Um, but so if you want to do a clockwise rotation, which is how we defined um, CN, right? It was a clockwise rotation. And this is uh, uh, really important here. This is across the z-axis that we're rotating. So this is a z, a, 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 a z rotation, a z-axis, okay? And you can see that the z doesn't change, right? There's a one here, z1 went to z2. Um, that doesn't change, so we could have written z1 went to z1. But um, what is changing is x uh, and y, okay? And so this comes out of some trigonometry. Um, and so you don't have to worry about how this was, how to drive this or anything like that. And again, I'll always give you the formula. This is a clockwise rotation of a certain number of degrees. Um, so if you have a C2, right, that's gonna be 180 degrees. So these would become 180 degrees there. Um, look at the improper rotation, okay? It's the same exact formula here, same matrix, but uh, there's a negative one. And why is there a negative one? Remember that an SN, right, is equivalent to doing a CN um, and followed by a sigma H, right? So you did the CN, but then you're gonna flip it across the Z. So you rotate it across the Z, and then you're gonna flip that down to the other side. So whatever the Z value was became a negative. Right? That's the effect of the sigma H. So that's, um, basically, all the different symmetry operations represented by three by three matrices, taking any arbitrary x, y, z point and converting it um, into a new x, y, z point that is reflective of what that symmetry operation does. Okay.